Thank you for listening to Value-Based Care Insights, a podcast by Lumina Health Partners. I'm your host, Shelley Chopra. The series is for healthcare leaders and organizations navigating the journey to value-based care in the ever-changing landscape of our healthcare industry. And that could not hold more true than the times we are in right now. Our goal in the series is to bring to you disruptive success strategies for healthcare organizations, leveraging our experience having worked with some of industry's top experts and thought leaders. Before I get into today's episode, I'd like to invite you to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and let us know what you think about the episodes and questions that are top of your mind. With that, I'd like to welcome my co-host, Dan Moreno. Managing Partner at Lumina and an Industry Thought Leader for Value-Based Care. Dan, as organizations navigate their way through the reopenings, there seem to be two key focus areas for healthcare leaders. First is the lost revenue recapture. How do they reclaim the revenue related to lost volume, shifted pair mix due to the pandemic? And in our last episode, I believe it was episode 16, our colleague Kathy Najarian had some great tips on how organizations can work with payers and recapture some of that lost revenue. The second area that is top of mind for healthcare leaders in improving their margin is cost reduction. How do they continually take out the variable cost out of the system and do more with what they have? And reflecting on our conversations with healthcare leaders across the country, there seem to be two areas linked to the cost reduction. First one, cost management related to shift in site of service. And second is optimization of variable costs in the process or care pathways, also known as clinical variation. What are your thoughts, Dan? That was a real... Yes, you're absolutely right. You know, when you think about costs, um, especially now that COVID is hitting, we organizations really have to focus on how they need to realign their costs. You know, unfortunately, COVID-19 has really negatively affected many organizations with many negative margins. You can't reduce costs enough to make up margins to that pre-COVID point in time. But what you can do is start to look at how you need to realign some of your cost structures taken into consideration some of the things that you talked about, shifts in your site of service, costs related to, say, you know, new services like telehealth and and telemedicine, um, and even costs related to variation of of certain services, like perioperative services, for instance, all of which, if you think about it, are really significant cost drivers. So with that said, Shelley, I'm really excited to have a colleague of both of ours, Rick Howard, who is a former chief data officer of a large national health system. Rick has a tremendous amount of experience in data and has done quite a bit of good work on um, identifying different cost elements, different cost structures, helping the organizations to take costs out of the system. Rick, welcome to the program. Thank you, Dan. Glad to be here. So Rick, when, as I mentioned, when, when organizations right now are, you know, they're really struggling with how to improve their margins. They're really struggling with how to, you know, again, recapture some of that revenue. And we provided some nice insights at, at our last podcast. And my colleague also wrote a great article on some tips to recapture some of that revenue. But a key area is reducing cost. And many leaders, you know, you can't reduce costs enough to recoup the margin. But as organizations are starting to think about cost, in your experience, what are some of the key areas that you've seen them focus on to really drive some of these results? Well, Dan, on a provider side of the world, there's a number of key areas that we can take a look at from the perspective of reviewing existing cost structures and determining whether or not there is a better way to deliver high quality service at a lower cost. Uh, One of those would be on the acute care side. What is the cost of a specific DRG-based procedure, as an example. Uh, Do you have variability in that procedure from physician to physician? Um, How how much resource are you using? Other areas of cost consideration would be, quite frankly, just patient flow through, for example, a clinic. Is a clinic providing the most appropriate workflow to optimize patient flow as a patient comes through the clinic to, to receive services? 
Uh, and then another one would be, we have to take a look at how patients are being scheduled and registered. Do we have optimization in the scheduling and registration? Are we having too many cancellations, thus for creating gaps in the schedule that is, quite frankly, costly with no revenue contribution to those costs? So there's a number of areas that we can take a look at from a cost management perspective in alignment with what we're wanting to do with revenue. So I've spent a few, quite a bit of time talking to different CFOs around the country and asking them what are the issues that are, are top of mind. A couple of them come back and said, you know, we need to have different different cost models, different staffing models to take into consideration what this new norm is going to be as we move into the post-COVID arena with site of service. And I can't help but think that these costs and these shifts in costs you know, they're going to be important, but they're going to be relatively small. I think what you're talking about is really around creating efficiencies in the care models and the way that care is delivered. And in particular, reducing a lot of the variation in care. I can't help but think that that, that variation that occurs with how the providers are delivering care has to be contributing to quite a bit of cost for organizations. No, I agree, Dan, and we can provide an example here, but before I get into the example, the ultimate goal of any provider organization is to deliver high quality care to their patients. That is first and foremost. But I believe there's a way that you can provide high quality care, maybe even better care than your average care model today, while you're also reducing those same costs. Uh, One of those examples would be on the acute care side. If you look at a DRG-based study, you can pick a DRG. I would suggest you probably pick your, your, you know, your highest revenue DRG. Uh, And then compare physicians that are billing against that DRG. What you find is there's an enormous amount of variability from physician to physician. Let me give you an example. Um, Some physicians order a significant number of radiology and lab tests, as an example. Um, Now, if you did a comparative and went physician by physician per DRG so that you've at least got a controlled point of review here, you're probably gonna find out that your physicians are varying significantly as to what they're ordering for that specific DRG. That's cost. Um, I realize everybody thinks that radiology tests and lab tests are free in a hospital, they're not. So, If you take a look at those costs and you understand what the variability is, and then you understand how to address that variability with each of those physicians, you can significantly impact the cost of delivering service, but it's not just about the cost. You also have to overlay quality metrics onto that same analysis. What is the length of stay? What is the readmission rate? What is the post-operative infection rate for some of these things? Um, and then a net, another component of that is what are you utilizing in the form of resources? The number of lab techs, the number of OR techs, the number of nurses, the number of MACAs that are in the, in, the, in the facilities. All of these factors can come together in a review and make a determination as to where you believe you have opportunity to reduce cost per DRG and across the organization reduce cost in, in, in a comprehensive way. That makes so much sense to me. You know, from a reimbursement standpoint for these DRGs, the reimbursement is for the most part set, but, but that cost can really be variable. And as you mentioned, based on the number of tests that are provided, based on number of the, the staff that, that are utilized, based on even number of, of supplies. And I, I kind of think about like, you know, joint replacement, if you will. A um, lot of supplies, a lot of different uh, you know, the staffing that's included in there, even the flow through from the patient could be very different, almost based on the physician's practice style, if you will. And you bring up a great point. If organizations really begin to think about what that best practice is of the clinical pathway or the care model that's being delivered, and then create a, a structure, an expense structure or a cost structure that really supports that, that streamlined approach has to create some, some really nice improvements for organizations. What have you seen in terms of being able, you know, some outcomes that as organizations have really focused in on this? Well, uh, as organizations focus on this, what I've seen is a significant reduction in cost, depending on the DRG itself, because some DRGs are far more costly than others, but you see a pretty significant 
uh, reduction in cost. And in, and in most cases, you could see even an increase in the quality since you've got that quality metric that's tied to your cost review. Uh, those are hard dollar benefits that you can see from the organization. Some of the softer dollar benefits are as you work with the physicians and augment their workflows. Uh, just think about it, Dan. If a physician has their workflow augmented to where they're ordering less labs, less radiology tests, spending less time per patient on those reviews, well, now you've enhanced their, uh, op you've optimized their time with respect to time spent per patient especially if that time spent per patient is optimized to the extent that you're now receiving better outcomes for those patients, because that's the ultimate goal here. It's not just about cost, although in the new healthcare economy, cost is a significant component of what we have to pay attention to. It's also about increasing the quality of care to patients. Now, as I talk about the optimization of your, of your physicians, many physicians in a hospital setting are affiliates. You don't employ those physicians. So you're really creating a physician engagement approach with these physicians that will actually give them a, a loyalty factor to your hospital because you're the one working with them to optimize how they're getting their job done, giving them either more time to spend with, pay, with other patients or, quite frankly, reducing the amount of time so that they have a better quality of life. In how yeah, absolutely. Them. That's a great point. Great point. And I think those efficiencies, like you said, is going to lead to much higher quality care for the patient, but then also some significant benefits for the physicians, all of which will really drive down costs for the organization and improve that margin enhancement. So when you think about these aspects of, of clinical variation reduction um, and driving down costs, talk for a few minutes around the data that's required. I know this is, you know, this is really your ballywick, you know, area that you focused a tremendous amount of time on what are some of the data areas or the, the, the information insights that you see or have seen in the past that have really been important to help leaders not only identify where to start, but to deliver this information to the physician so we can really make some nice progress? Yeah, that's a good point, Dan. And so first and foremost, you're going to start with your EHR data. Um, things like the number of orders submitted per, per case, the number of radiology tests, the, the number of labs done you can pull the frequency of that directly out of your EHR data because those orders are going through your EHR system. But you need a little bit more. You need supply chain data. For example, if you have, in your example, a knee replacement surgery, you got to know what those implants cost. Uh, you need to do some time studies. How much time is a particular OR tech spending in the DRG and how many of them are, being, are, are, are spending that time in, the, in, in that specific DRG-based case? Um, and then you probably need to take a look at some financial data. What are some of your costs? So there's three sets of, or three domains of data there that we've just spoken about, and you have to figure a way to attribute that data and align it with those specific cases. In a lot of instances, you're gonna allocate uh, because unlike manufacturing or other areas where we track cost right down to each individual component. Typical healthcare doesn't do that. So there's a lot of allocation models there. So we've got to figure out a way to use those allocations of both direct and indirect costs and attribute them to these per DRG approaches so that we can get a, an understanding of what we want to work on. Yeah, the financial data, I think, is probably the most difficult, but in my mind, probably the most important, right? Because if you really begin to think about what the true cost is of delivering care around that DRG, um, and you can quantify that, and you can quantify what that variation is, that becomes really powerful. And then you layer on top of that the EHR data, and as you mentioned, the time base or the workflow data, that helps you understand you know, not only what's going on, but why it's going on. To deliver that information to the physicians, that's where you're really gonna make some nice progress. Oh, absolutely. I mean, even if you're looking at financial data that, that lays your cost out in averages, for example, the average of a specific lab test, the average of a CT with contrast, as an example, at least you have average costing data that you can attribute to the activity coming through the orders in the EHR and give yourself a basis for being able to analyze what that looks like and what the variation is actually costing you. Yeah, absolutely. In, in your experience, as you've worked with other organizations or even in the previous organization that you worked with, 
what have been some of the the cost reductions um, that you've seen from going through these types of, of exercises? Oh, well, certainly a reduction in the number of those tests ordered, uh, potentially a reduction in the number of staff resources being used on a per DRG basis, and even some other reductions. For example, as we optimize some of these activities, you may find out that depending on the DRG, surgeons are spending less time in the OR, so you're freeing up OR time. It would seem um, to me that these dollars are, are quite considerable. Um, how, how much money have you seen coming out of the organizations from improving clinical variation or reducing uh, it? What I've seen is in, my, in, in, in the most recent example I received in speaking to a colleague the other day, over a three-plus-year three year period is a little over $200 million. That's significant. That's significant. significant. And especially as organizations are focusing on trying to reduce their costs down to Medicare reimbursement levels, this is how they're going to get there, right? By really creating streamlined approach around how they deliver care, really these care efficiencies in their care pathways. I, I agree. I mean, there's, a, there's only so many things you're going to do with revenue because I believe revenue is going to continue to be under pressure. Just look at the percentage of, D, of GDP that healthcare represents today. So revenue is going to continue to be under pressure. Most healthcare organizations are not making double digit or large margins today anyhow. Um, and you can only take so much out of your administrative cost layer. At some point, you're going to have to get to your service line level costing and try to understand what that looks like and manage appropriately so you can make the efficiencies and the changes necessary to give you a fighting chance to re retain revenue and retain margin more importantly. Yeah, great point. You know, you can only reduce, you know, your variable costs so much. I mean, it really comes down to reducing costs around efficiencies. So when you start to think about, you know, engaging in reducing costs around these DRGs and reducing clinical variation, obviously working with physicians are going to be key. What are the other, if you were to give our audience, you know, a couple pieces of advice of, of where to start, what would you offer them either in terms of, you know, working with physicians or leadership or, you know, how do organizations begin to undertake this? Where do, where do they begin? You know, you can get, you can create, I'm a big believer in the agile process. So in order to get a minimally viable product, you can start with something very simple. We've just used it as an example. Take a look at the number of labs, the number of radiology tests ordered per DRG by physician and then you've got an average cost model for every organization for each of those particular tests. And just look at that level of variability. I mean, that would be a very quick analysis that you could, that you could do and say, wait a minute, I do have an immense amount of variability. I have an opportunity here for costs and to reduce cost. The next thing you've got to be prepared for is you've got to have your clinical team engaged so that you can sit down and have those conversations with those physicians because the clinical team will be able to speak physician's language. Whereas for me as a technologist, I don't speak their language. So I, you need somebody from your clinical team engaged in this process to truly understand how you deliver that message. And more importantly, how you iteratively work with those physicians to make the necessary workflow changes to receive the, the benefits. Right. As I often say, you have to deliver that information to physicians in a way that they can understand it and really impact that change. This was great. I think you brought up some really key points as organizations start to improve their, or really look at improving their margins, these finance leaders, healthcare leaders are under tremendous pressure right now to really improve their margins. And even as we move into the new norm post COVID, I think there's even going to be more pressure. And as you said, there are some opportunities to increase revenue, but I think they're limited. I think there's more opportunity to reduce cost. And what you brought up today, I think in, in terms of helping organizations focus on reducing some of that variation um, around some of these clinical pathways. And if they could start on some of their key DRGs, um, I think that's what's going to provide some long-term, real sustained cost reduction results that are going to help these organizations. Really appreciate your time, Rick. Um, any last advice or parting words you might want to offer to our audience? Yeah, I mean, as we start to take a look at minimizing our costs without sacrificing quality of service delivered for our healthcare patients, one of the other considerations here is as more and more of the cost burden shifts to the patient and you start to bring your cost in alignment, you may start to influence patients that would otherwise not be able to afford procedures to move towards performing those procedures. So you could start to see 
a, an increase, not significant, but an increase in patients that are going through these procedures simply because you've got a cost alignment model that they can afford and they can start to move forward. Yeah, that's a great point. So you can almost use some of these initiatives to drive volume because it's more affordable to some of the patients, particularly those that are in a high deductible plan that would be paying for it anyways. Exactly correct. Great point. Great point. Well, Rick, thank you for your time today. Really appreciate it. Um, I know we're going to be talking more about this. I think down the road, I'd love to invite you back to spend even more time talking about analytic strategies and you know, help our colleagues work through the challenges they have and really aggregating data across multiple disparate systems. I know you've done a lot of work in that area as well. So please do come back and join us again. It was a really good discussion, Rick and Dan. And I particularly appreciate, Rick, you talking about the need for provider involvement and engagement in making the change. That's often one areas of uh, creating the buy-in with the stakeholders that creates the gap between a great solution offered by technology, but yet not turning into reality. So I really appreciate that. We want to thank you for listening to Value-Based Care Insights, a podcast by Lumina Health Partners. We at Lumina are your partners in the journey to value-based care. To learn more about us, visit us at luminahp.com. And if you found value in today's conversation, subscribe to us on all major podcast platforms, including Apple and Spotify, and leave us feedback. You can also find additional blogs, thought leaderships on the topic of financial recovery, and transcript of our podcast episode at our website, luminahp.com. Join us again next time wherein we invite several of our colleagues and industry thought leaders in continuing our deep dive and talking about new trends that are emerging as organizations navigate the new normal. Until then, have a great day and stay safe.